Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to today's Open Text Analytics live demo webinar. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Ross Evans, and I will be your host today. And I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Chirag Patel, who is a senior solution consultant here in the analytics team. Chirag, over to you. Thank you very much, Ross. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Open Text uh, Analytics Suite uh, what live webinar this morning. Um, I've got about 30 minutes to run through what will have to be a very high level overview of our analytics suite to give you greater insights into the capabilities around the platform. And it's more for an, uh, the ability to give you some sort of food for thought and generate some ideas of how you could potentially advance your analytics in your organizations today. As I said, it's going to be about 30 minutes, so I don't have a great deal of time to go through every capability in the platform, but uh, it's a very dynamic and powerful platform. So um, certainly do after the demo, if you wanted to uh, have a trial of the platform, uh, you can go to our website to download a trial and, and have a feel for the platform yourself later on. I'm going to start by giving you a very quick overview of the analytics suite. Uh, so I'm just going to show you one slide before I kick in to the, the webinar itself and the, and the dem demo itself. So just to give you a brief overview of the analytics suite, we focus a lot of attention around self-service capabilities. A lot of the research that we've carried out recently, as well as customer meetings that we have had uh, over the last couple of years, have really told us that customers, whilst they've got their own large teams of analy uh, analysts in-house, they do want the ability to carry out self-service analysis as well. Uh, this is particularly for ad hoc projects, but also because the analytics teams are often very busy. And by the time that they get around to carrying out the analysis and, and delivering those outputs, uh, it can often take far too long for, for the business users. So self-service is, is a key fundamental requirement. We also pride our product and the architecture around having an open design and being very flexible. So whether that's connecting to uh, disparate data sources, again, something that's come up in, in our research, um, disparate data sources and being able to connect to lots of different disparate data sources and bring them into one single interface where they can uh, create analysis on all of those uh, and merge those data sets together is a key thing, but also around um, APIs and connecting to external gadgets and embedding into existing applications rather than having lots and lots of different applications to go to, you, you can view all of your information in, in one or two different applications, which is a lot more powerful and a lot more user friendly. Of course, this is an enterprise grade arc, um, infrastructure and, and platform. And another core aspect of what we offer is advanced analytics capabilities. And that's what I'm going to jump into straight away. So let me share my screen. And we're going to jump straight into the advanced analytics part of the platform. Uh, just bear with me while that loads up on your screens. So as I said, I'm going to join. I'm going to start by uh, going through the sort of more mathematical and statistical part of our analytics suite offering, and that really focuses around using statistical techniques and advanced mathematical uh, algorithms and machine learning to create those advanced analytics capabilities that are usually, uh, up until now at least, unavailable to business users, obviously due to uh, um, not having biz um, a mathematical, statistical or some sort of scientific background or degrees or, or, or whatever. So giving users the ability to carry out those advanced analytics capabilities is extremely powerful. And the way we do that is through a very simple drag and drop user interface, uh, which is powered by our own uh, proprietary data uh, database uh, that's extremely fast, enabling users to cr create analysis uh, and calculations on many millions, billions, and even trillions of rows of data. So uh, what I've got in front of me right now is just a overview um, of the loading capabilities in the front end, but we also have a, a back end ET ETL capability as well. But a lot of the um, loading capabilities and transformations you can do directly from the front end platform right here. 
We have a number of different databases on the on the left hand side here, and I, again, everything is drag and drop. So I can drag that financial services database, for example, and I can view a summary of that. So qu quickly, we've got a summary to show that we've got 54 million rows of data. So for most businesses, you know, this is a, quite a large database uh, which we're able to analyze, and this is all stored on my local laptop, uh, just a standard work laptop, um, and you'll see through, through the course of the demo that it's a very powerful platform and runs that analysis very, very quickly. Uh, this, as I said, is a financial services database and we've got a customer uh, table of 1 million records um, and 46 million different credit card transactions. So it's, it's looking at the um, different types of spending that our customers have throughout our bank. We've got lots of different examples here, such as hospital and patient data, looking at trends in uh, the sorts of reasons why patients are visiting various different hospitals. We also look at different trends geographically and trying to understand better what demographics uh, and other characteristics of the patients uh, that make up certain, um, whether it's a top 50 uh, cost patients in a particular hospital uh, or across some sort of treatment. We've also got uh, a retail and a telecoms example, which looks at analyzing customers and trying to understand the makeup of those customers so that we can then better understand who are our, our most profitable customers. And then using that information, we can then take that a bit a step further to look at, well, we've identified our most profitable customers. Let's now focus on trying to market out to our existing or even to new customers using that profitability um, criteria that we can then be more sh more certain that we're gonna focus just on bringing on new customers or, or uh, marketing existing products to customers who are also likely to be profitable. And then from that, we can then further that analysis to look at customers who are going to be loyal versus those who are likely to uh, leave us and just focusing on those who are more lo loyal customers. We've also got something around uh, utilities. So we, here we're looking at more of an IoT type uh, offering, so Internet of Things, where we're looking at uh, different components within a manufacturing process and identifying uh, which of those components are likely to break down and have faults more frequently than, than others. And also then correlating that to the cost of the individual component to see if different cost components, um, you know, it, it's not always the case that a more expensive component is going to be a better performing one. We've got uh, data around social media. So this is Twitter feeds um, and, and understanding the um, implications of uh, activity on, on Twitter and how you can then link that back to sales metrics or operations metrics. You know, if you might be getting some negative feedback on Twitter because there's been a, a, a problem in your operational flow. And finally, we've got something around uh, web analytics uh, where we look at um, web logs and, and Google Analytics data and again correlating that to, to sales performance. This is just a few of the databases we have. Uh, we have lots of other use cases as well. What I'm going to do um, is give you a, a quick understanding of the uh, retail database. So this is one that focuses on our um, uh, on a retail online retail business. So I can view the million rows of uh, customer details here, and we can also bring up a summary. So it's telling me uh, the linkages that occur between the customer table and the other the tables in that database that it's linked to. We also have discrete and null values here. And this is where we have two different types of users that use this platform. We've got the analysts who want to be able to use this despite having access to products like SAS and SPSS and you know more um, code oriented platforms. They also want to have a simple and easy to use um, user interface like this where they can just create some very quick analysis and do some data auditing and uh, data preparation and this sort of um, summary gives them a very good insight into that and capabilities around doing that but from a business user perspective they want to be able to create some advanced analytics capabilities and that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to show you how you can create a very quick bubble chart using something called RFM, which is recency, frequency, and monetary value, something that's very pre predominantly used in the retail business. RFM looks at how recently 
did a customer buy from us? So was it in the last 30 days, in the last 100 days? They also look at the, the frequency of the customer visit. How often are they visiting in a given period? So in a year, for example, have they visited us and purchased once, twice or five times? They also look at the monetary value, which is the average spend that they have over, over the last um, transactions or over the last year. So looking at the mean value there. And in advance of the demo, what I've asked um, the platform to create for me is a cluster based on these three criteria, the recency, frequency, and monetary value. I've said I'd like uh, a cluster to be created based on four different clusters across my million rows of customer database. And it's now created uh, different segments or clusters based on uh, the, the performance of our customers across um, our customer database. So for example, this cluster in the top left here, it tells me that a customer has purchased from us on average one and a half times during the last year, so not very frequently. Uh, the last time they purchased was almost a year ago, 309 days ago, and they're spending on average about £93. So th these are actually not our best customer uh, in terms of performance and, and how much they're spending. On the bottom right, however, that we can see that this, um, this, these set of customers, they are purchasing from us on average more than four times a year so more than once a quarter um, they've almost purchased in the last month so 36 days and they're spending about double what uh, this initial cluster that we looked at are so these are our best customers so maybe i want to focus my analysis on this segment i can do that by clicking on this and you can see it's added uh, that data sample to my scratch pad here 355,000 customers and i can drag and drop that and view that here in in my um, in in the platform directly, and I can do more analysis with that. A sort of next stage to this would be to look at something like basket analysis to understand from the clustering we can understand which of our customers we can focus different um, vouchers and marketing campaigns around. You know, like if you buy something in the next month or the next two months, you can get twenty five percent off, of, or, for example. But here we're looking at basket analysis, and this is the sort of next best product. So uh, this is telling us that if a customer purchased a decorating or a hardware product, statistically and mathematically, they're more likely to also buy a gardening product. Uh, and further down, if they've bought a hardware product, they're more likely to buy a decorating and electrical product. Now, this is a, an ex, um, extremely good use of predictive algorithms, something that our customers uh, from our recent survey told us that they see the predictive algorithms being a key component of something that they're going to be doing in the future. Um, sorry, if I just go back to the output again, this is a very, very easy to understand um, output. So we've got three columns that the user really needs to look at, the antecedent, the consequent, and the opportunity. Where, where, wherever there's a star that tells the user uh, that this is something of, of uh, value and, and of interest to take further. So going back to the um, the bubble chart, what I wanted to do was just to show you how we can publish this data um, and make it available to, to the mass users. So as I said, uh, the business user wants to be able to create their own self-service analysis in this um, analytics platform, but they then want to make it available to, to a wider user base through visualization. So I can publish this data and connect directly to my visualization platform. Um, and, and I can do that as a report or as a data resource. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to save it, first of all, as a report. And then secondly, I'm going to now save it as a data resource as well. Um, so if I now go to my visualization side of my platform, um, this is the uh, this is what I've just created. So if I load that up, this is going to show me a pre-canned, uh, pre-configured report. So it's I've not had to do anything more than just publish it from the analytics platform into the visualization side. So I've got the table of data and the chart as you saw in the the platform just now. But let's say if I am a more advanced user or I, I want to be able to create my own. Um, self-service reports and visualiz visualizations that I want configured and formatted in a particular way. Well, I can access that data resource that I exported as well directly from within here. And once I've selected the data that I want to add, uh, the data appears on the left-hand side and I can drag that into the canvas and create a very quick, simple, unformatted report. 
But if I want to format it, I've got the ability to edit the properties, I can edit the data, and I've got some other capabilities around sorting and filtering as well. I'd like to add a chart to this so we can depict that data. So I'm going to select a column chart, and I'm going to add those frequency, monetary value, and recency values uh, to create um, a column chart. So very quickly, I've been able to create a report and a chart. But let's show you how you can now edit this chart. So perhaps you've got a, you wanted to give it a title, so I could call this RFM chart for recency, frequency, and monetary value. Our company uh, branding is blue, so I want to apply a blue theme. And of course, you can create your own themes and apply those. Um, and you may have multiple different themes that you want to use for different purposes. We also have the ability to add a legend and edit the X and Y axes. And I'd like to make the chart a little bit wider, so I'm going to do that as well. So I've now edited that. We've applied a, our theme and, and changed the branding, the coloring of this as well. One of the other great things you can do here is you can bookmark elements as well. And by bookmarking that and giving it a name, um, you can then make that available to other users um, who, who want to be able to reuse existing pre-created um, elements, so whether that's a chart or a report or an entire report. Uh, so I can select elements or I could select the whole grouping of uh, elements on this screen and then make that available to users to use in the future. So what I've shown you is uh, the self-service capabilities, but let's now go over to a, uh, a finished dashboard to show you the sort of cap wider capabilities of, of a, of a um, dashboard. So here on the left hand side, we're looking at, uh, of course, in this instance, it's a, it's a retail bank where a customer would log into their personal banking space and they can now look at their spending by their different product ranges, but they can also filter by category of spend to see what sort of key areas that they're spending on. We can also filter by date range so if I want to look at the last three months. And rather than looking at the monthly data, I'd like to look at daily data. So I can drill down into this bottom chart here, and it's now showing me the daily spend. Now, it's important to understand that security is a big part of any business organization. And of course, the user, it, it, the, the system is c capable of understanding that an individual user is logged in, and they're only going to show their uh, or be able to see their individual bank accounts or products that they should be seeing. And in this particular instance, they're only seeing their credit cards and banking products, and not their investment products or pensions or anything like that. So it's all um, specific to the, the, the use case. We can also drill down into the uh, the type of spend to look at the individual merchants. So here we've defined the drill down capabilities in the data itself in the back end. And I can also drill through to an underlying report as well. So rather than just having a high level view of my spend, if I wanted to go down to the granular detail and look at a statement, I can do that as well. So here we've got a interactive uh, table, which I can switch the view to look at it as a chart, or I can switch it back to, to look at it in the table format. So we've got all the BI capabilities that you would expect from a high performing platform. Uh, so I can show a column that has been previously hidden by um, the creator, the developer. So we've added the category of spend. We can also add an aggregation here. So uh, let me call this total and we've now created an uh, aggregation of the spend for this period. One of the great functionalities of here is we've also got the ability to export to a whole range of different uh, outputs like PowerPoint, Word, PDF, as well as Excel. Now, the good thing about the Excel output is it's a live export. It's not just a static uh, output. It has all of the formatting um, that's been carried forward from the uh, from the visualization side, but it also carries forward all of the calculations and the roundings and things like that. So at the bottom where we've created that aggregation, you'll notice it's actually taking it uh, as a formula um, at the bottom here. So if I was to now edit um, and change one of these values, you'll see that the total at the bottom has also changed. This is a really powerful capability um, and something that our customers have often found very, very useful to, to carry out what-if analysis. So rather than having to create some analysis in the visualization platform and then reproduce it all in Excel by cre recreating the formulas and editing it, they've got the capability to do that straight out of the box through a simple export and then be able to carry out the, those what-if analysis very, very quickly. So a uh, huge time saving.
Um, one of the other examples uh, I'd like to show you is our City Taxi app, and this is oriented around a business like Uber, for example, where uh, in this instance uh, the customer wanted to create a dashboard and reports around their executive users uh, and how they were using the, the, um, the, the taxi company uh, to monitor their, their spending and, and the types of key trends around the usage. But one of the other things we have within here, which something I mentioned earlier, was around um, being able to use an open architecture that enables you to embed and access lots of different external gadgets. So this is a Google map. You can see it's a, a live map showing the live traffic in New York City. Of, well, it's now 5.30 in the morning there, so of course there's lots of green around. But I can zoom in and zoom out. Um, and then I can also click on the individual um, icons here to get more details about uh, the taxis that are available. I, I can honestly tell you I've never had a Porsche Boxster pick me up, but I look forward to the day when that happens. So this is a live uh, embedded gadget which is refreshed in a one minute period. Uh, so you can connect to just about any gadget using JavaScript APIs, uh, for example, um, and um, obviously make use of anything out there that, that um, will enhance the user's um, ability to interact with uh, whatever it is that, that you created. So you can see that's just up, updated, um, as I said, every minute. So it's now showing there's 13 rides available in New York rather than 12. And the next dashboard I'd like to show you is our sales executive dashboard. And this is a great example of uh, connecting to lots of disparate data sources. Again, something that our customers say is a key challenge for them. So here we've got um, sales performance over three different continents. We've got Asia Pac, we've got Europe, and we've got North America. So a heat map depicting that. So we're taking data from all these different data sources and combining that into one platform where we can then create visualizations around that. We can also hide different um, aspects of data. So if I didn't want to view Asia Pac and North America, I can deselect those and I'm just viewing EMEA data. One of the other great capabilities within this particular dashboard is the linkages to external platforms as well. So here, for example, I've, we've got links to our email client and various other different notification clients. So rather than having to go to three, four different applications, we've got it all housed in one single platform, giving that great capability of um, being able to just focus on one application and having everything within your your control there. Another thing uh, that it, within this, this dashboard is responsive design. So if I change the size of this particular uh, dashboard, you see that the um, items have now changed uh, in, in size to, to, to match that. Um, so if I change this to the size of, say, a tablet or a smartphone, you'll see that um, that's changed the assets accordingly using our HTML5 charts. So this is also a great functionality uh, within this. And uh, one of the other things is if you wanted to then go into further detail, rather than looking at a high level view, you wanted to look at, say, your top 10 or top 15 sales uh, reps um, by performance and compare them their performance to the previous year. We've got, we've got reports uh, using a RAG um, color coding here as well to, to improve those visualizations uh, and, and how quickly you can interpret that. And the final thing I wanted to show you, obviously, as, as I mentioned, it's a very quick, short webinar, webinar just to go over the, the high level capabilities, is something around our unstructured data. So this is uh, electiontracker.us. This is a live website, so please feel free to visit this uh, electiontracker.us. But this is an example of the iHub, our visualizations embedded into an external website using uh, APIs. And we've then combined um, our unstructured data elements. So we've web scraping over 200 different news sites to, to pick up uh, information and articles relating to the US election. So obviously this is going back a, a few months um, and also around Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump picking up uh, relevant information and articles around that, consolidating those 200 different uh, disparate data sources into one uh, database, one platform and then applying our unstructured data um, analysis algorithms using uh, neuro-linguistic programming um, and trying to better understand the metadata around that. So we collect, we, we extract the metadata, things like people's names, so whether that's Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, job titles like 
president, CEO, CFO. It could be n- names of things uh, like companies, so Coca-Cola, Apple, or or things like Democratic Party or Re- Republican Party. Um, and then using that metadata, we have the ability to create visualizations like word clouds depicting the, the key words that were mentioned, uh, and we can play that over a weekly cycle. Um, this is the sort of thing that, you know, especially for things like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, trying to monitor the key words that were mentioned or perhaps um, things that have been mentioned in, on your website as well. And here is a heat chart showing the, the states that were that had the most mentions and obviously the darker the color, the more mentions. And again, looking at um, sales metrics or operational efficiencies by uh, um, different plants in different regions and things like that are also some very good use cases that we've come across with our customers. Uh, right now, I'm looking at the last seven days, but we could look at, say, the last 90 days of data. Um, and using our sentiment analysis, we can understand uh, whether something is a fact and therefore neutral, or if it's uh, an opinion and therefore negative or positive in sentiment. Um, and this is something we've spoken to lots of customers about, looking at uh, customer insights and customer journey, uh, and also looking at um, feedback loops. So, you know, g- g- people who have sent in complaints or, or an email that could even be positive is trying to automate those systems uh, so that um, it doesn't have to be done slowly and manually. It can all be automated. Here we've got a direct comparison of different um, metadata that we've collected, so things like armed forces, foreign policy, terrorism, healthcare, key focuses around the US election. And we can um, see that the green and the red shows the positive versus negative sentiment, but we can also uh, drill down into, for example, Donald Trump to get a better understanding of, of um, th- those particular policy areas um, and how they were mentioned in a positive or negative light just around Donald Trump. So we've got the drill down capabilities built into here as well. And further down, we've got a direct topic comparison by um, uh, topic, sorry, and of course the media comparison by each candidate and sentiment as well. So uh, th- that's the unstructured elements combined with the embeddability of our visualization platform into an external website, but also it combines our big data an- analysis, the, the the mathematical and statistical techniques, so the predictive algorithms to help predict the future positive and negative sentiment or the uh, future policies that are likely to be uh, talked about the most and things like that. So again, lots of different use cases in in, in the business environment which um, could be utilized in in this particular in this uh, same or similar sort of way. Um, we've come to the end of our sort of half an hour slot in terms of the actual webinar uh, and the and the live demo, but we're going to um, have some q and a um, time now as well. So I'm going to hand back to Ross. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Chirag. That was great. Um, Obviously, a huge amount to cram into a very short space of time. We do offer the chance to go into any of this functionality um, on a sort of one-to-one basis if you have a particular interest or you you didn't quite get the the level of detail you wanted today. This was just a a taste of, you know, the, the breadth of capabilities. And, you know, what Chirag showed you at the beginning, it was really, you know, analysis of very large volumes of data. And we just touched on, you know, very simple and basic use cases of the kind of things you can do there. We then switched into the data visualization, the presentation layer, which is where you can take data from the big data analytics tool, or as you've seen, pretty much any other source that you can connect to, um, you know, standard databases or where you have API um, connectivity so it's very versatile in terms of what you can actually do with it and it's it's usable for reports it's for dashboards um, pretty much anything where you wish to translate data into some sort of uh, visual representation and you know you can gear it up to to your target audience whether that is um, internally for uh, internal business users but also there's a growing desire to present data externally so a lot of people want to create customer dashboards because of the sort of fundamental way this is so easy to embed it's you know a very good option for not having to go it alone and sort of write a entirely new application for presenting data to customers you can pretty much plug this in uh, and start to do it in a very secure fashion so i'm conscious of time um we're going to throw it open now for some questions and if you want to ask a question 
uh, I'll just call your attention to the chat icon, which is a little speech bubble down in the bottom left. So if you do have a question, um, please do open up that window and and ask away. Just while we're waiting, Chair, I got a question that comes up sort of time and again on these demos um, is around the deployment options. So we often get asked, you know, is this a cloud solution? Is this an on-premise deployment? You know, what's the situation there? So we offer a, a flexible approach. So we have customers who want to be able to own the uh, infrastructure and and have full control over it on premise. So we offer that option, uh, but we also have um, for parts of our analytics suite, we offer cloud options as well. And we're rolling out cloud throughout our um, our product range uh, very shortly as well. So there's a, and we also offer a hybrid option. So we're very flexible. Okay, so I've got a, a few questions coming in here. So. Um... If we can't, if we can't sort of give you the detail on on this call now, we'll um, we'll definitely come back to you subsequently. So, first off, Chirag. Um, so this references Info Archive, which is obviously the open text uh, archiving um, platform. Do you know if this can be used to actually target data that is held in that system? So we, we've got a lot of integration within uh, our open text suite of products. So we we do uh, have integrations and connection connectivity to various different data sources in our uh, open text range of products. Uh, so something I should have mentioned right at the start was uh, the analytics suite is integrated right across all of our different products. So um, th there is definitely the capability to um, be able to access that data as a data, as a data source. Very good. Okay, another question here. Um... What is the difference between this and IBM Watson? So uh, the, I guess um, IBM Watson is very much focused around the sort of unstructured uh, data elements and um, machine learning uh, capabilities. And we, we've got a, a product being released in the coming uh, month or two uh, called um, OpenText Magellan. So it's a new product. It integrates um, a number of our different technologies to to combine um, open um, architecture, things like Spark, to maximize the the capabilities around things like using uh, and accessing the the power of Hadoop, for example. So um, the, the, this is really our solution that's going to be the, the, the big competition versus IBM Watson. So so um, we certainly have a lot of capabilities around uh, what, what we what we currently offer versus Watson, but really our our offering and our comp competition versus Watson is going to be extremely high once the, the, the Magellan project product comes out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, really exciting launch uh, for the business. And, you know, it is going head to head with Watson, but we are taking a very open approach to the infrastructure. You know, you can build your own um, algorithms, you can use algorithms, open algorithms from around the web. You know, there is a very open source mentality, which really goes back to the heritage of, of the uh, original open text analytics product suites, which is continuing into Magellan. So it gives you similar functionality, but we're taking a different approach. And it's all about, you know, how you can, you know, make the most out of a sort of cognitive or artificial intelligence platform based around, you know, the brilliant work that goes on globally, not just um, sort of leveraging proprietary um, functionality, let's say. And just to add to that, sorry, Ross, is just the 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 infrastructure that we we have is is proven linear scalability as well. So it gives you the the um, companies and organisations the ability to really keep their cost base uh, uh, at a minimum. Okay, is there any functionality supported to integrate our programs? Uh, so at the moment, uh, we are going through a new update, uh, and with the release of Magellan, we will have the ability to into, uh, to, to bring in external um, algorithms like R um, and any sort of proprietary um, and custom algorithms that you have. We'll be able to utilize those uh, within the, um, the the new release. So that's not currently available, but it will be shortly. Okay, very good. Um, there's a question here is whether we can mention any iconic customers. Um, unfortunately, we can't sort of drop names other than those um, which we were sort of showing on the screen at the beginning. I think for those in the UK, um, you'd be very familiar with the likes of NHBC, which is a large building insurance 
um, organization who are using this. Um, you know, we can certainly share some publicly available case studies um, when we sort of follow up to this. Uh, one more question. What would you say is our unique selling point when you compare to something like Click? So th there's, uh, there's of, of course, lots of different products out there, but the, the Click's a great product, obviously, from, from a visualization perspective. The, the key elements, I would say, are around um, memory usage. So Click, when, when it comes to large volumes of data, very, really does struggle with memory usage. Uh, so that's certainly one key aspect. But what we offer as an analytics suite goes far beyond um, visualization. As I showed, um, I, I know the person asking the question wasn't at, um, didn't wasn't here during the first part of the, the uh, demonstration. But what what I showed at the start, which was the advanced analytics capabilities, the mathematical algorithms, the um, the machine learning, the predictive algorithms, the statistical techniques. That's something that products like um, Click uh, certainly do not have. So this these are the the, the core capabilities that that we offer. It's it's not just one visualization platform it's a whole um, suite of applications and, and, and products but also the embeddability and the ability to uh, it, uh, access and bring in external gadgets and um, embed, embed that into any existing application it is a real strength of ours. Great stuff and um, just one, um, one final question here so just a question as to whether we are rated by Gartner or Forrester. And I think I can probably take this one. So what we'll do is we will send out all the kind of latest analyst reports uh, just following this. You know, certainly we are, um, you know, high on the radar of all the key analysts. And, uh, you know, we perform well in lots of the various sort of rating um, systems as well. OK, well, that is all of our questions. And I thank you ever so much to everybody for uh, putting those forward. We hope we've given you, um, uh, you know, some good answers there. All that remains for me to do is uh, just to wish you uh, a very enjoyable day and thanks to all of you for joining.